Welcome to Viewpoints. Uh, I'm Stan Sapinski, and I have with me today Dr. Ron Khaleesi, who is the Executive Associate Dean of Off-Campus Programs at Fairleigh Dickinson University. Ron, welcome. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Stan, for inviting me. Ron, um, I understand you have a, a, a fairly new Homeland Security program uh, at your university. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Certainly. Yes, Stan. We have a new uh, Master of Science in Homeland Security. It's a 36-credit graduate program that can be taken online, fully online and face-to-face. -face. Uh, it's about six months old, and um, or six months new, mm -hmm. and uh, we have approximately 20 students enrolled. We expect that to increase significantly over the next couple of years. It has three major concentrations, uh, 18 credits, six courses. They're all three credit courses. So uh, from a selection of a grouping under Homeland Security Leadership, Homeland Security Emergency Management, and Homeland Security, Terrorism, and Security Studies. Those are three, uh, three major areas. Okay. Uh, what kind of students do you have? I mean, are they working professionals, or are they you know, typical students that have just finished a bachelor's degree? Or? No, they are working professionals. Um, we screen the applicants um, in that they need to have extensive experience, uh, okay. not necessarily in security and defense, although we are looking to attract uh, members of the military. We have a very good relationship with the National Guard Bureau and the Department of Defense and the uh, U.S. Department of Justice where we received numerous grants for converting our face-to-face -face classes into online modality. So we, we'd like to have more people from the armed forces take the class and also members of the civilian uh, agencies that protect our homeland. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're, we, we have people in law enforcement, first responders, we have those that work as contract uh, government contractors and those in the corporate security profession. Okay. Um, you know, that, that, that makes for an interesting mix. It certainly makes for more robust discussions when, when you're online having that kind of diversity and that kind of experience. Absolutely, it does. So, um, what, um, what process did you use to kind of develop the program? I mean, you know, Homeland Security, we've, we've had lots of discussions about what Homeland Security is, and it's, it's really kind of hard to get your arms around it. What, what did you, how did you decide what courses to put into this program? Well, the first place we looked was the benchmark and the, uh, the vanguard, and that's your center uh, for Homeland uh, Defense and Security. And we found uh, some of the best content and the, the finest instructors in the nation. And, and we looked at several other certificate programs in the country. We didn't find as much as we thought there would be at the graduate level, mm -hmm. um, but the subject matter was available. And then we uh, consulted with a gentleman who acted as uh, our consultant for the application as it goes through numerous levels in the mm -hmm. process for approval internally and externally, a member of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission uh, who was also a, a very big help. So mm -hmm. the, we, we looked for the best courses to fit under these concentrations and, and the core requirements, and we felt that this 36 credits was ideal, and the audience we were looking to target was uh, what we had experienced in before because of another program we have, which is a 30 credit Master of Administrative Science, the largest graduate degree program, which this evolved from because we have concentrations in that program in emergency management and in global security and terrorism studies and computer security and forensic administration. And uh, so as an offshoot of that, we had developed this entire program. So mm -hmm. they're complementary. And so this helped us to, to um, tailor it more for the audience that I uh, described before. Sure, sure. Well, that certainly, I think that's a smart way to go, to, to, to kind of take something you're already good at doing mm -hmm. and grow it from there. Um, what about faculty members? Did you use existing members? Did you go out and find new ones? We have, uh, we, we use some of our existing members because we have uh, members of the law enforcement community who have retired but are, are subject matter experts and they're very dynamic presenters and thoroughly prepare for lectures. Um, and we have uh, some new people who, uh, one works for the U.S. State Department. Presently, he is assigned uh, in Portugal. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they're just out, have outstanding credentials and, a, and tremendous credibility because of their backgrounds. And uh, of course, they're, they have their academic credentials as well, PhDs mm -hmm. and uh, for the most part. Mm -hmm. And then we have those that are, are uh, working toward their PhD or are, are so good at what they do with a master's 
that you know they wouldn't be passed over because they lacked that terminal degree. Um, and so we have a well-rounded staff. We have a we have an attorney who's the former county executive, and he headed up uh, many catastrophic emergencies, including a, a big hurricane we had in New Jersey called Floyd that shut us down for a week. And uh, he's, he's worked with the emergency services for many years, and he was a legislator, and he teaches constitutional issues. He's an expert in the area. So that gives you an idea of the blend Terrific. of people we have from right. various backgrounds. Yeah. And I guess with a distance learning program, they don't necessarily have to reside in New Jersey where the school is. That's correct. That's the beauty of it. We have people from all over the world taking our programs. Uh, even though this is a brand new program and we have a couple of people out of state and, and, and a couple from the, from the armed forces, we expect it to reach into Europe and other places in the world because of its, the quality and the reputation we're, we're earning. Excellent, excellent. Now, uh, I know you've spent the last couple of days uh, here in Monterey uh, attending a conference of the University and Agency Partnership Initiative. Mm -hmm. uh, did you find that useful? Is there anything you can take back to your program? Immensely useful. I mean, in so many ways. The, the networking and the people of diverse backgrounds and the various schools that were represented here and, and the information that we shared, and it was all about collaboration and openness, which is so refreshing to hear. But it's, there's such a tendency in academia to jealously guard what you have because everything's viewed as competition. I, I like yourself, uh, have a, a different viewpoint on that, that the more you give away, the more you'll get back, uh, that will cause an effect. And when you really gain the trust and you're trying to help other people, everybody gains and benefits. So that the people here were really committed to the coursework, whether it be a certificate program, associate level, graduate, a bachelor's, or graduate, so there was a nice mix of, uh, of programs, personalities, mm -hmm. and, and perspectives that made a tremendous recipe. The, the, the presenters were phenomenal. I mean, they, they, you could listen to them all day. It, I think the program was too short. <laughs> I think it should have been longer. I know people have a lot of time commitments and constraints, um, but I'm very happy and very pleased to have been uh, asked to come, and, and, and we at Fairleigh Dickens are very grateful for that invitation, and we uh, plan on staying in close contact with you and the center and the, and the presenters and the, uh, and the other members of the academic community. Terrific, terrific. You know, I'm going to uh, just kind of emphasize one of the points that you made, and that is that uh, I found that uh, within academia, you're right, there, it, it is a business mm -hmm. and there is competition, but you know, in, in the homeland security field, what I found is that uh, there's a real willingness of people to share and work together. And uh, I, I think it's because they all feel it's sort of a higher calling. I mean, we're, we're, we're doing this to serve the nation. And I really get that sense. There's a sense of community that I haven't seen in other academic disciplines. That's so true. And I think uh, initially people need to meet face to face. Uh, it's nice to have online courses and the you know, asynchronous learning and anytime, anywhere and all that. And, um, but it's, there's nothing better than a closeness and the intimacy of a classroom and uh, the informality that takes place. Once you gain that trust, people just tell you where, they're, where they can be of assistance and vice versa on the other end. So everyone complements each other's programs and works out some of the rough edges and some of the apprehension. Uh, we also helped in the sense that we, um, we advise people what things they may think about doing so they don't reinvent the wheel or make sure. the same mistakes. Sure. They might have to go sure. through the same struggles when they can be a straighter line. And w as you say, it's a higher calling. We're all in the same, for the same uh, vision and mission of, uh, of protecting our homeland. And, uh, and so we must work together. Absolutely. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed uh, the conference. And certainly, I, I appreciate your coming and being part of our Viewpoints program. Well, thank you very much, Stan. Appreciate Thanks. it. Thank you.